When I was a Bible-believing evangelical Christian uh, attending Moody Bible Institute, before I began my serious scholarship on the New Testament, before I began to read it in Greek, and before I saw what serious scholars of the world had to say about it, I was absolutely convinced that the Gospels not only contained eyewitness tradition, but that they were written by two eyewitnesses, Matthew and John, and by two people who were close companions to people who were eyewitnesses, Mark and Luke. Intense research has a way of changing your mind about things. But I don't want you to think that this is a reason for you not to use your brain. Even if you are the most hardcore, Bible-believing evangelical on the planet, you surely think that God gave you a brain. Use your brain. Craig and I will agree on this. God gave you a brain to think with. Apply reason. That's why God made you a human being instead of a slug. Don't be afraid of using your intelligence to find out the truth. The truth may not be what you were taught, but if it's true, you should believe it, not run from it. As I studied more and more using my intelligence as an evangelical, but also praying about it, I became convinced that the New Testament Gospels were not written by eyewitnesses or by people who knew eyewitnesses. The first point to make is the rather obvious one that the Gospels don't claim to be written by eyewitnesses. They are all anonymous. The titles in your Gospels, the Gospel according to Matthew and so forth, were added by later editors. They were not put there by the original authors. Second point, none of the Gospels claims to be written by the person whose name it bears. They don't claim to be written by eyewitnesses, and they don't claim to be written by people named Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Those are later traditions that were added to the Gospels. These traditions do not start appearing for about a hundred years. Some people think that there is an early church father named Papias who attests to the witness of Mark and Matthew, but in fact there are very solid reasons for thinking that Papias, who lived around the year 120 to 140, is not referring to our Mark or our Matthew. The first time anybody refers to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John by name is Irenaeus in the year 180, a hundred years after these books were written. Is everyone else? Apart from evangelicals, not as intelligent? Are they blind? Are they demonically inspired? Everyone else? How is it that the only ones who think differently, the only ones who think that the Bible is completely reliable, are people who have a particular theological point of view that affirms that the Bible does not have mistakes in it? This is a theological view, not a historical view. And people are, of course, welcome to have it. But the people who have it should admit that when they say the Bible is reliable, they are saying so not on historical grounds for historical reasons. They are saying so because their theological views require them to say it. If they did not have these theological views, they would agree with everyone else, Christian and non-Christian, that the Bible does not provide a reliable account of the historical Jesus and of the history of the early Christian church. Let me tell you why I think it matters. Many good Bible-believing Christians think that the Bible provides a blueprint for faith and ethics, for how you should believe, what you should believe, and how you should live. Questions over such things as abortion, gun control, gay rights, that the Bible provides us the blueprint. The problem is the Bible is not a single book. The Bible is a lot of books written by a lot of different authors who have a lot of different points of view that disagree with one another. This means that we should not be dogmatic about what we think and insist that what we think is what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches lots of different things. The Bible welcomes lots of different views, and we should too. I once thought that the Gospels were completely reliable. Now I no longer think so. It's not that I decided to jump on the scholarly bandwagon and abandon my evangelical faith. I looked long and hard at the evidence. I studied it for years. I grappled with it. I prayed over it. I talked it over with friends and loved ones. And eventually I came to see the truth. 
The Bible does not provide a reliable account of the things Jesus said and did. I know most of you will not change your mind, but I hope you realize that people like me come to this question honestly and openly, not trying to destroy the faith of others, but simply searching for the truth.